No, but I'm saying use your my brain. Knowledge on, my knowledge on, on, on the tour and, and the yeah. Bible is yeah, but, that, but I'm saying just listen to what I'm saying and use yeah. your brain. If Jesus affirmed the Torah and we have something that predates Jesus, which is the same as what we have today, why didn't Jesus say, actually, guys, what you've got is corrupt? You're, you're, still, you're still not addressing my point. If the Torah yeah. was for the Jews, yeah. who was the Gospels for? The Injil. The Injil, yes. The Injil, what is it? We don't know the contents of No, I'm not asking you. I'm, I'm not asking you the contents. It was I'm a saying, follow one. It was a follow one yes. from the Torah, bro. Right. That is why. For who? That's why, that's, why the, that's why the Bible still comes with the Old Testament. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Who, who was the Injil sent to? Like The Nazarenes, bro. And who were they? And the people so, that were disobeying uh, Moses, bro. No, no. Let, let me say it again. The, the Torah was sent for the Jews. Yeah. Jesus was a prophet, and you believe he was sent to who? The lost sheep of the tribe of Israel. And who are they? The Bani Israel, the children of Israel. Right. So the man of Israel yeah. was supposed to follow Jesus, right? But Jesus' message wasn't anything different from what Moses came Jesus, is, Jesus basically just reiterated what Moses was saying. No, well, because even you, no, you don't believe that. Do believe because that? your Quran says differently. Shall I show you? Oh, show me, show me. Okay. Well, I can understand the um, question. Let me just find the verse. Yeah, Sokol made a mistake like, the other week when I had this chat with Chris. He's saying that I'm a British convert, bro. And I'm not, I'm not British and I'm not a convert. Bro. There you go. I don't matter. He made, he made an assumption based on the colour of my skin. What sort of, not sort of Mariam again? No, no, no. Uh, well, I'm not sure. Let me just find it. Uh, because it says in the Quran that Jesus was sent, he made some things halal which were not halal. Is that no, 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 no. I don't believe it. Jesus never said that. Yeah, let me find it. It's in your Quran. Because any, anything, that, anything that was for Moses was for anything that was for Moses. Jesus just basically reiterated what Moses was saying. So we don't believe Jesus came with a whole new religion. We don't believe Jesus told his people to call themselves Christians. Mukhlits is what it have been. The word Mukhlits. That those that are following. Yeah, but that's what you're saying still doesn't make sense. And I'll find the verse because if Allah acknowledges that there's a, a Injil which people are supposed to follow, it means you have two two books. One is the Torah and one is the Injil. Yeah, but, but the thing is, what, what did the original Injil, what did it contain? That's, yeah, but that's my point. So, the, we don't know, we don't if, know if you have to follow the Injil, you can't follow the Torah. It's a, it's a logical contradiction. And I'll find the verse because, again, I'll give you a, a, just a wider context. If Muhammad was for all mankind, it means you cannot follow the Injil anymore. It means you cannot follow the Torah anymore, you follow the Quran. So that's what I'm saying. If Jesus comes with the Injil, they can't follow the, in, the Torah anymore because they have to follow the Injil, which was who? According to you, the Banna Israel. You can't follow two books. No, but you're not supposed to follow two books. I'm saying and at the, the time of came, no, I'm no, saying no, at the time of Jesus. What you're doing is you're, you're thinking that Jesus came with Christianity, bro, and Jesus preached. Christianity. It doesn't matter. I'm not saying. I'm not saying. I'm not. I haven't said Christianity. I said whatever was in the Torah in the Injil is what was sent to the Jews according to you. So that means just like you believe Muhammad came for all of mankind. Exactly. So when Jesus comes with the Injil, which is for the Jews. The Jews have to then abide by what's in the Injil, in the Injil, because the Injil supersedes the Torah, just like you believe the. Um, and you've got the Sabor as well, the Sabor, the Psalms. The, sub, the Psalms is. What do you believe the Psalms are? Sabor, some of them Sabor. I don't understand it fully. So I can't give you a. a, a well, the book called the Sabor. Yeah, I know. I think Sabor means um, basically like Psalms. So yeah, the Psalms exactly. Of Solomon, Psalms of Solomon. Yeah. But obviously, where it's been, where it's been misinterpreted. Yeah. Mis but the reason why we can reject that because the Psalms is just poetry. It's not commands, and also um, you don't know, so I can't make an argument against it. But what we do know is that the the Injil, and let me just find a verse. Uh, 
Okay, right. So in, uh, yeah, I found the verse. Right. It says. What? 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 what um, what's it in? What, 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 it says, "I have come to confirm the truth." Three fifty. Surah Al Imran. Yeah, I knew it. Yeah, two or three. Yeah. Right, so I'll read it out to you. Yeah. It says, and I am to confirm. No, three. Three, uh, 50, 50. I, I am to confirm what preceded me of the Torah and to make lawful to you some of what was prohibited for you. And I have come to you with a sign from your Lord to be mindful of Allah and obey me. So if Jesus came with the Injil, and as I said, he made some things lawful, how can then Allah say, I've given you to you and I'll find a verse Let's so we can just have a look at the verse. No, no, that's but that's my point. That's why what this, what Al is saying is refutes Islam because it doesn't make sense. And I'll explain to you again. I'm not saying Jesus was sent to the Gentile. I'm saying because the Bible completely refutes that. We we can get into that point, but listen to my point first. If Jesus was sent to the Jews, then that means the Torah is no more valid. They had to follow the Injil. I can't say, I can't say, that's why I said to you, if Muhammad brings the Quran, yeah, Alan, Alan, I'm not, I'm, yeah, but I'm not saying, I'm saying, regardless of what was in it, we know some things were made halal, then that is the new ruling for the Jews. Because if the Jew, if the Torah says certain things are halal, are haram, but Jesus is saying, actually they're halal, then how can they use the Torah as a guidance? It, it's a contradiction because they will say, for example, okay, let's say, no, no, but I'm saying Allah cannot say that statement. I'm, and let me find the statement. Okay, so verse 547, it says, again, yeah? Imran? Surah Al Maida. Yeah. Uh, actually, no, it's not. Uh, actually, hold on. Let me see. No, that, that's that's just talking about the Injil, sorry. Did the British come to India and tell the Muslims to convert to Christianity? They're liars! Did the British do that? Uh, true. Did the British convert by force any of those people that they conquered? Who did they first convert by force? So, yeah, so we'll start from 48. Uh, for, for, actually, start from. Yeah, 48. And we sent down to you the scripture with truth, confirming whatever scripture that preceded it and an overseer of it. So, judge between them according to what Allah has sent down and do not follow their whims instead of the truth that has come to you for each of you we have assigned a legislation and a method and had Allah willed he could have made you a single community but in order to test you through what he has brought you to race towards good work to Allah is your return all of you he will inform you regarding whatever 
you use to differ over. So judge between them according to what Allah has sent down and do not follow their whims and beware of them lest they assure you away from some of what Allah sent down. But if they turn away then no Allah wants to afflict them for some of their misdeeds and surely make many people are definitely disobedient. So, so what I'm saying is if Allah understands, so in the Quran, Allah recognizes this, the Torah and the Injil that has been given to the Jews. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. At the time, before, before the full revelation of the Quran, Allah is saying, you have something between you which you can judge between. But that statement doesn't make sense because if the Jews were supposed to follow the Injil, then how can they judge between from the Torah? Because they're supposed to... The, 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 if we go in order, the Injil supersedes the Torah and the Quran supersedes the Injil and the Torah. So it's like, yeah, we, have to, we would have to follow the, what the Quran says as a ruling. I can't say, well, the Injil says this, so I'm going to follow this. No, if the Quran says do this, that's what I have to follow. So if Jesus came with the Injil, and as you argue, he was for the uh, Banner Israel, then he can't say to the Jews. So you don't think that you, so you don't think the Jews were sent to the children of Israel? I'm, I'm saying even the Quran doesn't affirm that because I'm saying, let's look at it logically. If the Torah is there for the, in, the Jews, the Jews would have to judge by what the Injil says because you say Jesus was sent to the Jews and the Injil was for the Jews. But even I'm saying at the time, the Nasara were not Jewish people. They were, um, was it Ethiopians or mainly Abyssinians or I don't know what it, whatever it is. But they weren't Jews. So that's my point. So how can I? I, I can't tell you whether, whether they were the Bani Israel or not. Because no, no, the children I, of Israel are so got Shephardic and Ashkelani Jews, didn't they? And then look, half of them are not even real. Ashkelani are not real Jews. Yeah, but then that's what I'm saying. It, you have two options. Either the Quran affirms that the Nasara were not Jews, or if you accept that the Jews, the Nasara were Jews. What are they called? They were, what are their original names? Not, not, um, the Nazarenes. No, there was another name for them that. Ebionites. But that, that doesn't help your argument. Because let's just say, for example, no, but let's say for argument's sake that Abionites, they were still Jews. So therefore, they would have had to follow the Injil. Because the Injil was sent to make things halal that were not halal. As I, that's what I read to you. Or Jesus, Jesus told them to the Jews, and I read um, Surah Al Maida. Sorry, um, was it? Yeah, Imran, where it said that Jesus was sent, he made, he made things halal that were not halal. So then if Allah is saying you have the Torah in front of you to judge, that doesn't make sense because if they said, for example, camel, camel is haram. But if Jesus, if Jesus has said, actually, camel is haram, is halal, why are they judging by the Torah? Because Jesus has made it permissible. So that statement in itself doesn't make sense. And it's a contradiction that, that the, the Quran can't be from Allah because he should have corrected them and said actually no you're supposed to judge from the Injil because that's what's been sent to you. Can we keep that conversation for hijab then? Because <laughs> I don't know what the support you need to, you need to, yeah. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. If you think about it logically, it doesn't make sense. How, Allah could not say that because that's why Christians, we read the Old Testament but we say we're not supposed to follow the Old Testament because the, the gospel supersedes it. Do you accept that? Do you think that the Bible is a dialogue? Do I? Do you believe it's a dialogue? I believe it's, dialogue? I believe it's in. No, no, no. It's not verbatim the word of God. No, that's not what Christians. Christians. The Christian belief is that the Bible is the inspired word of God. So through the Holy Spirit, people are inspired to write what they they witnesses. And this is a, and this is why. But none of them claim to be. None of them claim to have actually been. Yeah, but this is the thing. If we use our logic, imagine you have a God, and this is why I was going to have a conversation with you about what is the criteria for a prophet. It's God's obligation, almost like a contingency theory, that people's salvation is dependent on the scripture. If the scripture becomes corrupt, then people have nothing to judge by. They have no criteria. So I could come and pretend I'm a prophet. People are 
have to follow me because the Bible is corrupt. They've got not, not, nothing to judge, judge by. Right. So then, so are you telling me from? Because we have the uh, manuscripts of the Bible. They're all the same. You lot say. You lot. You say there was a. You okay? Where's the injil? That's my point. So Christians will say no, because we have we have no we have no evidence of anyone referring to the injil that you talked about. So that means let's say there was a true there was an injil, because it's gone. Who's it's actually God's duty to make sure that one is preserved. Because if you think if about Gospel of Barnabas, do you think it's a uh, um, yeah, it's a it's a later fabrication, uh, of course. But well, you think you think that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John have got more right than, than Barnabas? Barnabas was written much later. He's a blind companion of Jesus, bro. so he actually walked and talked. With yeah, him. but you have pseudographical, like you have the Gospel of Thomas that was rejected by the church, the Gospel of Barnabas. That's where I think the um, story of the clay birds, Jesus and the clay birds, was taken from the Quran. But this is my point. As if you believe there was an injil that has gone missing, the people had nothing righteous to judge by. So it's God's duty to ensure, and this is what doesn't make sense. Your Quran says we sent the Torah, and who were the protectors of the Torah? The prophets. So that means we have what we, we have the. Um, the Dead Sea Scrolls, yeah, well, yeah. right? Yeah, and that's what, so that's what damned the King James Version. Of the yeah. Bible, no, 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 no. But we'll get into that. But if we have, if we have the, that's the Old Testament. But if we have the, no, it's the Old Testament. They've got the oldest version of John. No, 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 no. Not in the, not in, not in the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Dead Sea Scrolls. It's the fourth century manuscript. The kind of Sinaitic scrolls. No, no, no. It's the, it's the oldest manuscript they've got. And when they realise that these verses are not in the oldest form, no, that that's 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 to be honest, bro. That's that's you're confusing the um that. The oldest uh, manuscripts we have yeah. of the of the Septuagint with the um, with, with the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Dead Sea, the Dead sea Scrolls were um, written by the um, what are they called the Essenes. No, the Essenes. Uh, it was in Hebrew, so it matches up with the Meso it matches up with the it matches up with the Meso No, I said the Dead Sea Scrolls. No, the, let me. You don't know what you're talking. Uh, let me show you. Have have a look. Type in. Um, type in Sinaiticus. Actually, I might even have it on here. Because what my point is going to be is that if the Torah is corrupt, but we have the Dead Sea Scrolls, which predate Christ, but if Christ was sent to affirm the Torah, then how come he didn't say, actually, guys, the Torah is corrupt? Because we have the Dead Sea Scrolls, which predates him. And if the prophets were the protectors, your argument doesn't make sense. Moss rebels way before 1300. He's a liar. He doesn't know. You can show just Google it. Because you will say the Bible is corrupt. The Old Testament is corrupt. But if Jesus was assigned, just me saying it, though, Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. It doesn't make sense. I'll show you the verse again. What is that? A bin? Are they bins? My argument. I reference the Ottomans and who? The Seljuk Turks. Let me finish. Let me finish. It's from the Let me finish. Look, look, look. The same we'll go, Turks we'll go. Let's just move. The Jason, let's just move. Where, what what, what area were they ruling? The same so look. Turks. What area? Now, I am. Yeah. Where are you? What area? Like, read this verse, Iran. and I'm going to try and um, find what I was looking for. Iran. Iraq, Egypt, Palestine, Jordan, Lebanon, Turkey. The Middle Building Laws. Yeah, read it, read it. Sorry. Now, if you. No, 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 no. I'm not. No, no, no. no. Why did I finish? Why did I finish? No. Uh, he said Iraq. He said Iraq. He said Syria. He said Iran. Those are not the countries where these mosques are. These mosques are in Arabia, Yemen, North Africa. They have the mosques built down in the 12th. 10th, 11th century, with the crescent moon. There were no Seljuks, there were no Turks there. I'm speaking. Liar, liar, liar. I'm speaking. I'm speaking. Where are your Turks in North Africa, you silly man? 
Yeah, so read, what does the verse say? He said you are we bestowed upon you the scripture from high with the truth, confirming... Yeah, what was the territory of the Empire? No, no, that's, what that's was the, the wrong one. Yeah, yeah, this one. So, I am... And I am to confirm what preceded me of the Torah and to make to you lawful of what was prohibited for you. So, Jesus affirms the Torah. Now, how come he doesn't say, and I'll show you the Dead Sea Scrolls actually before I make my point. Right. The Dead Sea Scrolls are ancient Jewish and Hebrew religious manuscripts. So they're, in he they're, they're in Hebrew. Yeah, no, discovered in 1946. Right. Prior to the Seljuks. So mostly Hebrew, Aramaic, Greek, and Latin. So mostly Hebrew. And estimated. Third century BCE. Yeah, third century BCE. So that's before Christ. So now this is my point. If your Quran says Jesus affirmed the Torah, and we have a manuscript of before Jesus's time, then what was Jesus confirming? Because if this is the same, because remember the the, the Masoretic text is almost 99% the same as what we find in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Yes. Yes. Do you, want me to, do you want me to prove it to you? Right. So that's what I'm saying. No, but that's what I'm saying. I'm saying to you. No, but I'm saying use your brain. My knowledge on my knowledge on on the Torah and on the Bible. Yeah, but that, but I'm saying just listen to what I'm saying and use your brain. If Jesus affirmed the Torah and we have something that predates Jesus, which is the same as what we have today, why didn't Jesus say actually, guys, what you've got is corrupt? Don't use this. It's corrupt. He never said that. It's only Muslims 600 years later that said it because when they people were saying actually the Bible proved Islam is false, then they have to say actually we don't have the originals. And that's why I asked you, where's the gospel? You said you don't know. But there's no historical record of anyone using any sort of referring to any gospel that is different from the one we have today. So you're arguing from conjecture. We, if you could show me someone that said, yeah, actually. There was a dispute, for example, like with Islam, you have the Shias and the Sunnis. They, the, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. We can trace the source and we can see where the disagreement came from. So if there was another group of Christians that were saying there's another uh, in Jill, we should be able to see the conflict and the historical timeline to say, this is where it started. This is where the division in the group came, the same as Shia and Sunni. So my point is this, and that's where it leads on to my other point of if Jesus came, but they don't, they don't accept the same hadith. Right, and and a lot of the hadith, do they accept? Do they accept Aisha as a, a, a chain? Yeah, but how, you can only access the Quran through the hadith because the hadith explain and the Sunnah. Exactly. So that if that's why, for example, she is. Uh, practice mutter. Well, whatever it is, but it's because they access the Quran differently via, via their own hadith. So my point is this: if we use our reason and intellect, if Jesus came with the Injil and the Jews were supposed to follow him, I thought you were calm down today. I thought you today. Well, you're right. I don't mind talking to you. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. So I'm asking you to reason, though. The, that's why it's a contradiction within the Quran. I had a good book, yeah. So it was, why um, didn't they change the tradition and the of the Bible, and that kind of went into detail which was a non -Muslim about the Essian and movement and the fact that a lot of it just recycled why paganism. Why didn't they change it back to Islam? Like yeah, two, it's too streamlined. Yeah, who was the book written by? Yeah, I know, I know. It was a Yusuf, yeah. Yus Yusuf. You saw, yeah. All right, that's what we did. I, I didn't even have to, I knew you before. Might have book, yeah. I might have been. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But that's my point. No, it's not. It, help, it helps our faith. Because it, the gospel, yeah, but no one accepts the gospel of Barnabas. And that was, I don't, I don't even know if the gospel, the gospel of Barnabas cannot be in the Dead Sea Scrolls because the Dead Sea Scrolls, right. Because the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Gospel of Barnabas, talks about the Apostles. So that was after 
the Dead Sea Scrolls because Jesus came afterwards. Who's got more authority to write on Jesus? The guy who actually walked and talked with him? How can... Or, or four people who, don't, who, who, who historically don't really know who they were. We know who they are. No, they They're synoptic gospel writers. No. You can speculate who they were. No, we know. Well, Matthew who? Matthew the Apostle. Matthew who? Matthew... When the son of who? The, why do you need to know who's the son it's of? It's very important though, because he's writing, he's, he's reiterating God's word, but he said he was inspired by God. Do, so fact, do, 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 do Shia people know Aisha's father? Yeah, no, but I'm asking you. I'm saying to you, okay, are you telling me, if I write... Where's the change? Are you saying... I dropped the mic! CT, now the laugh! CT, play the law. So JC, I'm JC, play the law. I'm By saying today, to you, today, if I wrote today, a letter India, saying there's a tree Pakistan, here and this and this guy, bald man here, was shouting in the park about whatever and I left it, are you saying it's not going to be true because Elizabeth. I don't put my name on it? Where's the change? I'm I'm saying if, if he, if he smoked a hell, hell, of, hell of weed and he had a bad character, no bro, yeah. then we don't accept that. Bro. Okay, so let me, let me ask you. Let me tell you something about a bad Yeah, okay, let me ask you. Let me ask you a simple oh, question. I know about I'll ask you a very. He tricked the horse, yeah? He tricked the horse yeah. to, um, to pretend to feed it to get the horse over. Mm -hmm. Something as simple as that, bro. And they, they, he but, was taken out of the. But let me ask you a question then. I'll tell you why that doesn't work. If this guy is is stabbed today and he was killed and the police asked me for my testimony, would you be okay with a court saying they would not want your eyewitness testimony because you're Muslim? Would you accept it? <laughs> Why? But the whole point is, well, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. This is this I'm saying this is the flaw of the hadith because Truth is based on what is can be reliably com proven, right? Not whether someone is a liar can tell the truth. That's why. Give me, yeah, give, give me, a, shaitan, give, shaitan, give me, like give me. Told the truth can, to, um, to for example, can, apart from you know Aisha, well. from and apart shaitan, from Aisha, yeah, but apart from truth, Aisha, can women be narrators of hadith? No. So, if a court said actually this woman can't be. Uh, eyewitness because she's a woman would an even an if she was and a narrator of hadith are two completely different things. What is a what is a narrator of a hadith? Someone who heard from the Prophet. Right. So you're saying because someone's a woman, they cannot. So give me some. Yeah, give me some. Give me some women. So no, none of the women, no women heard ever from someone a saying from the Prophet. Is that what you're saying? Huh? Aisha was doing it for them, bro. I mean, she's the biggest narrator of Hadith. Yeah, but I'm saying there's. And Abu Hurairah. Yeah, but there's other people. But I'm saying if that was the case. Give me women who narrated, but they purposely did not choose women because the Islamic reasoning is women's memories are not reliable. No, it's like that. It's like yes. That. So what about Aisha? Her memory wasn't reliable. Yeah, apart there. from Aisha, I'm saying that's why, for example, in Islam, a, a woman's two women's testimony is the same as one man's because it's always been understood that a woman's uh, memory is not reliable. That's why they're not they're not regarded as. Narrators of hadith. You added, you added a little bit, a little, a little added elements to the. Uh, no, okay. You tell me why it requires two women witnesses for one man. I don't know, but I can tell you. Okay, uh, let's go no, to no, what. Let's, that, that's not fair. let's go to. That's not fair okay, let's go to. I'm, I'm a very limited. Yeah, let's go to what your prophet said. Let's have a look. Because your best, your prophet is the best explanation. No, if he says it, you have to agree with it. Okay, so, th this is Sah um, Sahih Bukhari. Sahih Bukhari, the Prophet said, isn't a witness of a woman equal to half that of a man? Yeah, you want to read it out to me? And I'll just read it out so everyone can hear. The prophet said, "The prophet said, isn't the witness of a woman equal to that of half a man?" The woman said, "Yes." He said, "This is because of the deficiency of a woman's mind." That's why I'm saying to you, women.
are, are not regarded as um, na reliable narrators of hadith because your prophet said they, their memories aren't good. In the Bible, can a, woman, can a woman be a leader? Show me where it says you can't. Okay, and what's that got to do with anything? Okay. No, no, but my point is, an eyewitness, because that's who were the eyewitnesses of the, the, um, the empty tomb? It was women in the Bible. No one said to them, actually, your, your memory is faulty. So in the Christian tradition, we can accept the testimony of women. That's why you have the women who came to the empty tomb and they said they, they couldn't find the body. But my point is this, is that... <laughs> I've even forgotten my point. But um, No, but that's what I'm saying. So just in terms of, if we go... Uh, an eyewitness should be based on not what, what the person believed, even if that person was a liar, a li as long as we can establish what they said as fact, then that's what the criteria we should go by. That's why I said to you, if you witness something and the police said to you, we're not going to accept your testimony in court because you're Muslim, that doesn't make sense. But within your hadith chain, if someone was a Shia or someone was, even if they was an eyewitness, it wouldn't matter. They would have to be a reliable person and a Muslim. Yeah, that's yeah. So that's why I'm saying that's to you. Why, that's why it was very important. That, yeah, but that's what I'm saying that's to you. That's why I'm saying to you with the Bible. For example, let's just look at some. Okay, what time are you praying? Okay. All right. Cool. All right. No worries. Okay, when you come back. Yeah, but I'm asking very simple logical questions. Of course, I said to you, if Jesus was sent to the Jews, should they be following the Injil or the Torah? That's a very simple question. It doesn't. You don't need to be a scholar to have a think about it. You said Bani Israel. That means not the na exactly. So let's say the Nazarenes were Bani Israel. We're talking about the totality, not a small sect. Bani Israel is not the Nazarenes. It means the Jews. The Nazarenes, the people that followed the people, the people that followed Jesus, were sent to the Jews. Yeah, but I'm saying to you, if Allah says at the time of your yeah, but I'm saying to you, so who were the Nasara? So, but they were, they were Ethiopians. Okay. So then, who were the Jews that your Allah refers to? No, 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 Shepardic Jews, isn't it? <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I just wrap up. Um, what, what are you? What? Okay. So I just wrap up the. I just wrap up the conversation that I had with this brother, and I pointed out a logical contradiction within the Quran. I said, if in the Bible. If in the Quran, Allah says to the Jews and the Christians, judge by what I have sent you, that wouldn't make sense because if Jesus, that as Muslims argue, was sent to the, um, the Jews, then all the Jews should have been following the Injil. So Allah can't say to you, judge by what I've been sent, because in the Quran it says, Jesus made halal some things that were not permissible. So for example, if, for example, camel was not permissible in the Quran, um, sorry, in the Torah, then it would mean that in the Injil, for example, it's permissible. So why would they go to the book that is outdated to make a judgment? So therefore Allah is even confused himself because even as Christians, we argue that you're not supposed to follow the Mosaic laws, there's no sacrifice, that's done away with. So we say we use the Old Testament as a reference, but we follow the Gospels. The, the Gospels, um, the New Testament supersedes the Old Testament. But Allah is saying actually, you, you lot have got two books, which you are supposed to judge by, but there should only be one if you think about it logically. And the other point is, if Jesus, if Allah refers to the Jews as the people of the Torah, then who are the people of the Injil? Because they were the Nasora and they weren't Jews. So then why is it Muslims will say, well, Jesus was sent to the lost sheep of Israel? Because even, so you've got two options, but they contradict themselves. So either Muslims have to agree, that the Nasara were not Jews and Allah acknowledges non-Jews as following the Injil which would mean they're Gentiles or if Muslims want to make the argument that they were Jews as this guy tried to say then they should have been following the Injil all the Jews should have been following the Injil and not the Torah 
because he acknowledged that when the Quran came, it supersedes the Torah and the Injil, and everyone's supposed to follow the um, the Quran. Uh, the Quran. So before the Quran, what were the Jews supposed to follow? The Injil or the Torah? It doesn't make sense. So if people actually start to think logically about it, you will have a very obvious internal contradiction within the Quran. And on that note, peace out. For a long time, first time coming down here, you know, I'm not coming down here, I'm not the first ones I've seen, very well safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool, man. Uh, you're down and running straight away as soon as you start to see it.